I am Max, welcome to my channel, welcome back if you are returning. I am so happy to have you guys today because today we are celebrating the second Pride Month on my channel. I am very excited to make this video. It's a little bit of a weird one and I do think I have to put the disclaimer right now. Uh, you're gonna have to hold on with me. The cast video you're watching is relevant to what we're talking about today. You just uh, need to trust the process. I know it just looks like a random sim, but I promise it's not. <laughs> I'll just do like a very brief introduction to myself. I always feel bad when I do one, but I do think it's somewhat necessary, especially in this context, because I am obviously a simmer on YouTube, but I'm also who puts a lot of queerness into their stories. That is kind of a pretty big deal for me, and I aim to be a very safe space. I, w I thought maybe that I should be a little bit... <sighs> See, this video is kind of weird because you guys don't really know me. I mean, I talk... I, 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 I wish I was mysterious. I'm not mysterious. I talk about myself, like, a lot, but I did feel like for this particular video, I wanted to be a little bit vulnerable and I was really worried about it, but to be honest, it just kind of feels right to me right now um, to just like talk about my experience in this way. So I'm just going to be talking about uh, my own self a little bit. And I, I know that it's not something I see very often. It just kind of feels right. So for me, I, I can't really remember how I found out that gay people existed. I believe it was like Pinterest. I'm almost positive it was Pinterest because when I was a kid, I loved Pinterest. I was I was like really into writing, still am, as you can probably tell from my content, the machinimas. And I would just look for days and days and days for writing prompts and inspiration and stuff. And somehow uh, a bunch of like Tumblr-esque queer things would pop up like, you know, the love is love and the well-meaning stuff that really doesn't do much but I didn't know what that meant when I was a kid so it did do much for me. Sometimes I wonder how things would have gone if that isn't how I found out about uh, queerness existing. It's, it's really weird but um, I worry about what would have happened if I didn't because it was already too late by the time my parents decided to talk to me about how bad it was to be queer. Uh, it was too late. I was already an ally. <laughs> I was already an ally because I had, okay, I had a Pinterest board about being an ally. That's really weird. <laughs> That's really weird. Other than that, as I said, my parents kind of wanted to it, they always tried to educate us on things, but they almost always did it too late, such as um, reproductive health and queerness, like they just didn't talk about it until too late. And when I say too late, I mean, uh, I'm glad that they were too late because if they were not, I don't know who I would be right now. Um, obviously, I would still be queer, but I don't really know how willing I would be to accept it. So I did grow up in the church, and again, it's really weird to talk about this because like vulnerability is weird, but yeah, it wasn't talked about a great deal, but I remember, I think the first time my parents ever brought it up to me, I knew they were homophobic after my Pinterest board stuff because I knew what homophobia was and I knew how linked it was to Christianity and also religion in general. So I kind of figured it out, you know, and I don't remember what show we were watching, but one time as a family, we were just watching this little show and there was a queer character in it and they just paused the show and looked at us and was like, you know, that's a sin, right? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> so moody. Um, so appropriately though. I think that's like the most justified thing to be moody about in my personal opinion. <laughs> but um, as time went on, I continued to grow really passionate about queer issues. <laughs> I became really passionate about learning about more, really passionate about fighting anybody who said anything homophobic ever. Like I was a fighter, I was a fighter, I'd fight anybody. So as time went on, I didn't think too much about my label because 
originally i really was just like i don't really want a relationship and i was like 10 so duh but i was also like i don't really see myself ever wanting a relationship i just didn't see myself in the relationship that the environment around me wanted to be in if that makes sense as time went on i was like oh you know what maybe because i'm not into men i'm arrowways so Disclaimer, Arrowways is extremely valid. Like, that is definitely a real thing. Um, but it was not what I was. Because for whatever reason, little me just, it completely went over her head. She, didn't, she just did not even consider the fact that maybe there's another option other than story in Arrowways. I know normally it's actually, like, opposite of that, where people are like, oh, uh, I don't like men so I must be gay but they're actually arrowways but for me it was the opposite and I think that kind of is linked to and this is gonna sound kind of weird purity culture <laughs> I feel so weird talking about this but whatever I felt like oh well I'm arrowways but I'm still not sinning like being arrowways is not sinning because you know deconstructing is a hard thing but I was like okay yeah I'm and I'll just be a good member of the community um I don't know when I started to suspect that maybe that wasn't the right label for me. But what I do remember is this very vivid story of epiphany. It was just this moment where I was like, oh my god, I'm definitely gay. <laughs> like, it just came out of nowhere. But I was sitting in the office of the religious therapy services, waiting for my sister to get out of her appointment, because we were twins and I didn't have my driver's license, I just kind of tagged along with everything. But uh, we did so and I had these chargeable earbuds and they ran out of battery and I was just frustrated so I just looked up from my phone and there was this person standing across the room I don't know what it was about this person but it literally felt like time literally stopped so odd like I I don't really understand how or why this happened but I was just sitting there, I looked up, and I just stared. Because there was this person, and I don't even know if I saw her face. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know if I saw her face. I can't remember that much. All I know is she had pink hair, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm definitely gay. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I know it sounds weird. I do not know why that is. I don't know why. I don't e Again, I don't even know if I saw her face. In fact, I couldn't tell you what this was, but... It was such an odd moment, a moment that I, I can never quite figure out what the lines between reality and what I've fictionized in my head because I just, it, it just felt so weirdly unreal even though it was just a person standing there. Like, why does it feel so unreal? I wanted to pick my jaw off the floor and like maybe talk to them. I don't know. I'm a very anxious person. It takes me about 20 minutes or more to work up the courage to talk to somebody that I know. So, <laughs> you know, this was a big problem for me, let's say. So right as I was about to kind of work up the courage, this person, this other person, who weirdly enough looks so much like me, like I do not, <laughs> this story is so weird, but I, she looked so much like me. She came through the door and immediately she was gawking too. And she came up to her and she was like, oh my gosh, you're so pretty. She was like, oh, thank you. She was so sweet. And then they both left and I never saw either of them ever again. <laughs> and that's my story. <laughs> that's it. It's so stupid. But that was my moment. And now I've become more comfortable with the label of lesbian that's that's uh pretty much my label i feel like i might still be on the airway spectrum but i honestly don't think i am i think that for a while i identified as an asexual lesbian because i didn't want again because of just like the belief that any sexual feelings at all was bad so i was like okay there's no reason why being gay would be bad but like people have people can make up reasons for sexual feelings to be bad even though I I don't believe that it's just something that's ingrained in my brain anyway so I think I'm just a lesbian but I don't know for sure I also don't know where I fall on the gender spectrum yeah I, I don't know it's just really important to me that 
I, I don't know why I feel like I should share this. It's just, um, it's really important to me. And it's like nothing happened from like an outsider's perspective. Somebody walked in, I looked up, somebody walked in, complimented them, they walked out. That's so trivial. But that was like the moment for me. So yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, that, about my own journey. It's uh, This is going to be a pretty short video. I only made one outfit for one sim, so I can't really go into a great amount of detail. There's a lot of different, like, I could spend hours talking about how I got here, but I'm not going to because you wouldn't want to listen to me. And it's just really important to me to have a crazy amount of representation in my game because I want to feel represented and I want others to feel represented. All the different gender identities and all the different sexualities, I just want them to feel a safe space in my little YouTube corner. So uh, happy Pride everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, and if you haven't guessed already, I am I'm making a pink haired sim in honor of my gay awakening. I don't know. So yeah, I mean, yeah. It's a pretty simple video, but I hope that you get something from it. I don't really know what yet, but um, I hope you get something. Some uh, happiness, reassurance, just pride, I guess, for being queer. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you want to comment, you can comment. If you want to like, you can like. I'd love if you subscribed. I make um, a two main series, one, uh, and I do Mishidamas in gameplay for them. Very story focused, lots of queer people. And that's kind of my, um, my deal. Without further ado, I think I'm gonna say goodbye. So, uh, I really hope you guys have a great Pride Month. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.